All right, welcome everybody back to the channel. Um, I hope everybody has a great start to the new year. Uh, I've been kind of traveling and gone uh, through the holiday season, so I've kind of been gone for a few weeks now. So excited to get back into, uh, get back to the house, get settled in, and kind of uh, start doing some more videos for you. Um, with that being said, we are going to be starting with a new launch monitor today. Um, as you kind of probably could tell from the thumbnail of the video, we are going to start talking about and testing the Garmin R10. Now, it is a launch monitor that is going to be new on the channel, but it actually has been around for quite some time. It originally launched back in the summer of uh, 2021. Uh, it's actually what I started my home sim journey with back when I just had a hitting mat and a net to hit into. So I, I've got some previous experience with the device, so I'm kind of excited to kind of get it again and also kind of test it out, see if it's improved. All right, so real quick, like your purchase options for the Garmin R10 right now, like it recently was uh, down to 499 new during the holiday season, but unfortunately it has gone up back to its original MSRP, uh, which is 599. So most retailers you're gonna be purchasing through right now knew it's gonna be 599. Amazon does have the unit renewed through them for 459 so that would be a really good option i've had some friends go that route and they also got the included um e6 demo license uh buying it through amazon renewed and then of course there are some used options i believe like second swing golf has some units for around 425 and then if you go the ebay route i think auctions have recently been closing somewhere between like 350 and 400 dollars there all right, so real quick, we're just going to review what you get with your purchase. Typically, you're going to get the carrying case. You get the, the R10, the launch monitor itself, which it's just a little bit bigger than a credit card. Um, you get the tripod stand that is magnetic to the back of the device. You get a included phone mount clip to mount your mobile device and then clip it onto your bag or clip it on somewhere in your indoor environment. And then you're going to get a really short charging cable that's micro USB. And you can also use this cable to connect to your computer and do any kind of firmware updates that are available for the device. If you buy the device new, you're going to get a demo license, a mobile demo license of E6, which includes five courses, driving range access, and even games access. Uh, we will be kind of showing you that and kind of testing out some of that. Uh, in upcoming videos with a device. But I will say like if you're buying it used, there's a good chance that you're going to miss out on that E6 license. So I just want you to kind of be aware of that. Um, a few of my friends, like I said, that, that did get it through the Amazon Renew program, they still got the activation key um, basically from E6 for the demo license. So that, that might be your, your best option, but I don't know if that's a guaranteed thing. All right, so now let's kind of jump into the first demo and, and start hitting some shots and kind of see what we think about the data uh, and what everything looks like. All right, so we're gonna get out here and do our first demo with the Garmin R10. Um, we're gonna basically hit just a few shots with um, pitch and wedge, seven iron driver. Uh, we'll take a look at the numbers real quick and just kind of see, you know, if I think that they're kind of close or accurate to what I'm expecting. Um, we'll do all that in the regular Garmin Golf app driving range, the distance range, and then we'll go through the other three kind of target ranges they give you, and we'll also hit a few shots at a couple of those targets as well. All right, so let's get started. Uh, we'll launch the Garmin Golf app. Uh, I do have the R10 powered on, uh, and as for the setup, we do have it set at basically 15 feet, uh, laser measured to the impact screen, and then between the device and this red tee down here where I'm going to be hitting the ball from, there's 7 feet of distance, and that's what Garmin actually recommends uh, for minimum space. If you look in their documentation, it says you, you can set the unit you know anywhere from 6 to 8 feet behind, but Garmin actually does recommend 7 feet. So we got it at 7 feet behind the ball, and then we've got the minimum required distance for ball flight, which is going to be 8 feet from the red tee uh, up to the impact screen. So we've got the Garmin Golf app loaded up here. Uh, first thing first, we want to go into basically more and then go into Garmin devices. Make sure the device is connected. And then usually before you start, especially if you're going to be moving the device around quite a bit, like taking it down uh, after each session and setting it back up, just make sure you come back in here and, and go through device calibration. Just make sure everything's good and level. All right, so calibration's done. Uh, we'll go back out here to the main page, uh, the Golf Sim tab. We're going to go into the driving range. And then, like I said, you'll see that they give you kind of four options here. you got the regular distance range, and then you've got three target ranges. So we'll go into the regular distance range. All right, so for weather conditions, it will go out uh, and basically grab my location. So it goes ahead and sets the elevation to where I'm at currently and for my current weather. So we'll just leave that alone um, for this demo. And then also you can see, like, here's where you can kind of um, adjust depending on how far you're setting the device behind your, your ball hitting location. We leave it at seven feet because that's what we're using today. All right, and we'll start training. Um, I do have it set up for uh, the three 
metrics it's going to display to us is carry distance, ball speed, and then backspin. Now I have noticed like when you first load in, you know, you kind of have this portrait mode. Well, that's all they had initially when they launched, but since then they've updated to where you can do landscape by hitting this little button in the bottom and then turning the device sideways. I will say, however, it really drops the camera view um, down more to ground level. So when you're hitting like higher lofted shots, you really miss out on a lot of the the actual tracer because it goes out the top of the screen. So what we're actually going to do, since we're going to be hitting a pitching wedge first uh, and probably seven iron, we're going to go back to this portrait view. And then you change your club in the bottom right hand corner here. So like pitching wedge. All right, and also with today's demonstration, it is very highly recommended by Garmin to use uh, Titleist RCT balls. Um, they're gonna give you an actual measured spin metric as opposed to just a calculated one. So we are going to be using the Titleist Pro V1X uh, RCT ball in today's demonstration. And in this kind of like short demo, I'm just kind of showing you around the driving range, the target ranges, and we're just kind of kind of look at like maybe what my normal yardages are with my clubs and compare them to what we're seeing all right, so here's the first shot with the pitching wedge. I typically carry this out there um, about around 135. So let's see if we end up close to that. Yep, pull it a little bit left. And, you know, carry distance 134. So that's about what I would expect. All right, so here's... Shot number two. A little bit better contact I felt like that time. Uh, the ball flight's a little bit straighter with a little bit of draw, which is typically what my normal shot shape is. Uh, so we got that one out there, 132. All right, so the third and final one here. A little bit thin on that contact, I think. But still just a little bit left of center. But yeah, you can tell with the thin contact, we definitely did not get the distance that we had been getting. So we ended with 119 carry on that one. You know, that felt pretty accurate for uh, kind of the miss hit and the thin contact. All right, so those were the three shots with the pitching wedge. Now we're going to move up to the seven iron. Um, I typically carry this on my GC2 probably around 175, 178-ish. That might be a little right. Yeah, a little right. Contact wasn't the greatest, so 164 might be accurate on that. Let's see if we can hit a second one here. A little more out on the toe. And honestly, I think uh, if the shot shape was correct on that one, I think you probably would have seen it start right, like a push draw, and come back left. But the Garmin, that's one thing I think it's always struggled with is shot shape, especially when you kind of... Uh, kind of push it initially to the right. It kind of just tends to stay right, like almost like a, a small fade. Here's third and final one. That's definitely right and thin. Yeah. That was really poor contact. All right, so I'm not surprised. I felt like I probably hit it a little bit further than 154 carry, um, but, but yeah, that was pretty poor. All right, so that's the three shots with the seven iron. Uh, last one was pretty poor there. But we will switch to driver, and since the lower ball flight on this, we'll go ahead and actually put it in landscape mode, just so you can kind of see what that looks like. All right, not being loose, I would expect to, if I hit this decent, probably to carry it, uh, we should see carry like 260, 270 maybe, and then I'd expect ball speed maybe around 158, 162. All right, so here's the first one with the driver. Ball speed got up there a little bit higher. Anticipated, it still shows it pretty much as kind of a slice, really a fade. Um, backspin's pretty high. Let's see if I can hit one straight on the second one here. And I think that's right as well. Yeah. Backspin's down a little bit. Carry distance is close to the same. Ball speed's close to the same. We almost ended up in the same spot, I'd say. All right, third and final driver here. See if I can't draw, draw one. It's going to start right, but it should come back left, and it just doesn't. Mm -mm. Yeah, on that one, I just I, I feel like the swing path probably would have been my normal kind of push draw, like it would have started to the right, but really would have came back left. Um, so I don't feel like that shot shape 
was true to what that shot was. All right, so that's going to finish um, up for the three shots for the driver. So real quick, we'll go down here and we'll take a look at the stats. You can see this number nine down here in the bottom. That's basically the shots that we've hit. Um, pull this up here. So real quick at the top, it's going to kind of give you kind of an average uh, of everything you've hit with those clubs. So basically, um, our average carry with the driver with those three shots was 268. Average with the 7-iron was 163. And then the average with the pitching wedge was 128. All right, and then you can quickly see kind of a dispersion chart, a top-down view um, of the driving range here. If you want, you can click on either one of these dots, and basically it will show you uh, the metrics that it has. So say you're in here and you basically hit a lot more shots than I just did. Maybe you, you know, hit 15, 20, 30 shots with each club. So this is kind of a little bit more muddled and cluttered, and especially if you hit clubs that were much closer together so that those dots were really kind of overlapping a little bit. You can quickly go up to the top here, and you can deselect any of these clubs just looking at the shots for that particular club. All right, so I do think that's pretty handy as far as like getting a quick overview of like your dispersion and then just kind of like seeing your practice. Um, we will go ahead and end this session. And you'll notice when you end the session, you have a chance to either save or delete. So um, if it's something you want to continue to save to kind of see how you progress, um, you can go ahead and do that. If it's something that, you know, you're just kind of maybe having some fun, you weren't really taking some serious practice, you know, you can kind of delete it from there and don't worry about saving it. All right, since I showed you the, the regular distance range, now we're going to go back in here. We're going to take a look at the target ranges. So we'll go to the first one here. Same kind of menu options as far as um, your weather conditions and distance for the device setup. And then you'll kind of see you have the different flags and greens. So anytime you go into one of the target ranges, uh, you can click the flag, and then it's going to give you a quick overview of the yardage you're looking at for each one of these targets. So like crooked creek here basically our, our max distance or max target is going to be 188 yards we'll do some really short practice real quick with the lob wedge so we'll aim to this little 30 yard green then we'll click the little golfer to kind of come back down to this view kind of the same thing as in the distance driving range they do have the landscape mode but when you go to landscape mode it is going to bring you down essentially more to ground level view so since we're just hitting 30 yard shots we'll stay at that all right so we'll just hit a couple quick shots here Not bad, carried it, you know, 26 yards. That one didn't get down to it a little bit. I kind of caught it a little bit thin. Still not bad. About the same carry distance, 25 yards on that one. All right, 27 on that one, just to the left of the flag again. It looks like it kind of rolls on by. Little demonstration in a short chip area at one of these target greens. We'll go out and we'll show you some. We'll continue to show you the other target ranges. All right. So since we hit a few shots at kind of a, a short target, we'll leave this target range uh, real quick. We'll end the session. We'll just delete that because it's not real practice. Uh, we're just demoing it here. Uh, we'll go into driving range and now we'll go to Green Valley. The next one. Same options, weather conditions, uh, and also the device distance. And then if we click the flag here, we've got some much longer targets. Uh, inside of this target range so you can get out there, you know over 200 yards uh, there at the back edge uh, We'll kind of pick maybe um, Let's do like a middle distance. We'll stay short of the water We'll go to this green over here and you can pinch to zoom So you can get kind of down into the green a little bit so you can really kind of dial in what you're aiming at And then we'll go back to golf review and then we'll go switch it back to landscape view here. The Garmin and the RCT ball just seem to be kind of a little bit shorter distance than what I'm used to. Uh, I'm gonna try to hit seven iron in, into this target. So we'll hit a few shots real quick. That eh, might've been a little bit fat. Still got the distance that we needed. Bounces a couple times. So I think the ball physics there are pretty good. That one I, I hit better. Pushed it out to the right, I think, a little bit. Yeah, got a little more distance on it. Right edge of the green. So I'm going to be off the green, I think, on that one. Okay, we'll hit one more here. Caught that one thin, but I think that one's going to be a little bit straighter. So yeah, that one's probably going to work out okay. 
Eh, it's fading a little bit on me. All right, so had the right distance, um, even though that was kind of poor contact. <laughs> Got lucky on that one. Uh, but yeah, we still ended up off the green on that shot. All right, so we hit three shots uh, to that target. If we come back here, um, I did actually have that still mislabeled as lob wedge. Um, it didn't. I didn't change it to seven iron. So if we go in here to the these three shots here, you can quickly see it says lob wedge. Um, I obviously hit my seven iron. So if we click edit here, we can select all three of them, and then we can quickly down here in the bottom right just change club. So now we've changed them to the correct club. So in case you forget, and it happens all the time, you can always kind of come back in here and edit it after. Um, after you get through hitting. All right, and then from this view, we can kind of see, zoom in a little bit, we can see what those shots were. The first one was the only one that stayed on the green. Uh, the other two were better distance-wise, but they just ended up just off to the right there. Uh, we've got one more uh, target range here. Now this one is giving you a bunch of island targets, so there's a little bit more pressure. Uh, you gotta be a little bit more precise uh, otherwise, you're, you're basically going to be in the water. So we'll take a look at the target uh, ranges. We'll go maybe a, a little bit longer. Let's see. Uh, not being warmed up. Stretching it out here to this flag at 206. That's going to be... I'm going to try to hit 5 iron. Um, typically, that wouldn't be a problem. But like I said, I, I think this seems to be a little bit shorter. Uh, for me um, than what I, I'm used to seeing with my GC2 and some other launch monitors. So hopefully we can get that there. We'll go ahead and change it over to landscape view again. All right, so we're going to hit three five irons, see if we can get something close. Felt like decent contact. Yeah, but that's just the thing. I think carry distance of only 192. Don't think it's going to get there. Nope. Drink. See if we can hit a better one here the second time around. Got that one a little bit better. Well, felt like I got it better. Killing birds. At least it stayed dry this time. All right, so we'll try this one more time. That's thin. More on target, more on line, but I don't think it's going to get there either. Yeah, we're going to end up just short. All right, so we'll go ahead and end this session. So we'll delete that. All right, and we're back out here to the main page. Um, that is going to kind of conclude it for the demo today. I just kind of wanted to show you just how quickly to get in, kind of go to the driving range, you know, utilize the driving range, be able to utilize, like, and show you what the target ranges look like. All right, so I want to thank you guys for watching the video today. Uh, if you like the video, like the content, please make sure to like the video. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, uh, we are going to continue to do this series with the R10 for probably the next couple of weeks, and then we'll probably move on to another launch monitor after that. So if you like this kind of content, um, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Y'all have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.